God bless you. Amen for Jesus. Amen for Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I want you to turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5 and 14. And uh, I'm so glad that you all were able to make it out today, not uh, too stuffed with turkey and ham and Amen. yams and peach cobbler, sweet potato pie, pumpkin pie, dressing. Come on, some of y'all threw some ribs in there. All right, okay, okay. Chitlins. No, 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 I ain't. I haven't seen no chitlins in years, huh? All right, God bless you. We, we, we know you're still, you're still in holiday mode in the name of Jesus. Amen. But uh, uh, I, I just want to uh, share a, a theme with you uh, during this uh, Thanksgiving uh, holiday and we, as we're preparing for Christmas as well. In Ephesians 5 and 14, uh, Paul writes, he says, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. He said, wake up. Those of you that are sleeping, look at your neighbor and say, it's time to wake up. Amen. Amen. He said, see then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He said, if you wake up, uh, then you can see how to walk circumspectly. If you're asleep, you're not walking right. Now, this word circumspectly uh, has to do with a circumference or a circle. A person that is walking circumspectly uh, sees 360 degrees. They're able to see everything that's going on. God wants us to wake up so we can see everything that is going on. Amen? Circumspectly. Amen? Not as fools, but as wise. In order to be wise, you've got to be able to see all around you. Are y'all with me? Okay, uh, the 16th verse, redeeming the time. He, so, so he says, you got to wake up, amen, so that you can begin to walk circumspectly. And in walking circumspectly, you're able to redeem the time. In other words, you're able to buy back time, time that you've been losing. Amen. Come on. Some of us have lost some time. I, I know I have. Oh, you ever think, say, if I could go back in time and know then what I know now, Amen. It, it, it'll be a whole different situation. Come on, I'd be in a whole different set of circumstances. Are y'all with me? Would have planned better? Come on. Would have done better? Some things I wouldn't have done at all. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. He says, redeeming the time. So in order to be, it's possible to redeem the time. Amen. To do what you need to do to get that time back. Amen. He says, uh, uh, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And so how many know we're living in an evil time? The days are becoming more and more uh, evil, more and more wicked, more and more twisted, more and more perverse. Are y'all with me? Amen. And so because of that, part of God's remedy for the believers, for us, amen, uh, to be able to uh, uh, stay on top, amen, to have the victory in these last days and these evil times, is you got to be able to buy back some of that time. Amen. You have to be able to redeem the time that you lost. Amen. But you got to wake up. Push your name and say, wake up. Don't get mad at me. Don't get mad at me, but I got to wake you up right now because, you know, I think I'm around somebody sleeping. Amen. All right. Now, now we're going somewhere. He said, because the day is evil, the 17th verse, he says, wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding that the will of what the will of the Lord is. And so uh, all of this is connected, waking up, redeeming the time. Amen. Being able to uh, be uh, uh, wise. Amen. And understanding what the will of the Lord is. Look at your name and say, what is the will of the Lord? God wants us to redeem the time by understanding what his will is. Amen? What the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Speaking to yourselves... In psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Look at somebody say, to the Lord. To the Lord. Giving thanks for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And see, this is the will of the Lord. The will of the Lord is that we wake up. All of that is part of the will of the Lord. That we work, wake up because of the day, the evil day, the times that we're living in right now. Push your neighbor again. I know, I know. I'm going to make somebody mad in the manifesting or something. But, but listen, you got to wake up now, amen, so you can think, uh, uh, walk circumspectly, see what's going on around you, amen, because of the evil times you're living in so that you can understand Amen. What the will of the Lord is. And God wants you to be able to buy back. He doesn't want you to waste time anymore. He wants you to catch up. Amen. amen. From the time that you have been wasting or had wasted. Amen. Amen. But in order to do that, you're going to have to be uh, filled with the Spirit. Amen. 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 It's not time to self-medicate yourself with some wine. Or whatever, amen, your medication of choice has been. But he said, he said, wherein there is excess. Come on, out of balance. Come on. But now it's time, amen, to be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Now, one of the ways you can get filled with the Spirit, amen, is, is in singing unto the Lord. Amen. Worshiping and praising God. Amen. Come on. Amen. And so this is not wasted time even during praise and worship right now. Even during the time you're sitting here right now. Amen. But you need to be, we need to be singing songs. You got to get your heart into it. Amen. Not just lip service. See, because we as human beings, it's, it's one thing to do something mechanically. Come on. Amen. Or to do something technically. But it's another thing when you involve your heart when you involve not just your your intellect your mind but you start involving your emotions in it come on amen amen uh, 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 you know there's been a lot of uh, bad rap over the years about churches that are too emotional you ever hear people talk about church you, you know you don't need to be emotional no you need to be emotional in church why because your emotions is part of your soul. It's part of your spiritual heart. The Bible says that we have not a high priest that, cannot be, that can be touched uh, with the feelings of our infirmities. So we have a high priest talking about Jesus that is touched, that can be touched with the feelings of our in, in, infirmities or our weaknesses. You touch God with how you feel. Come on. About what you're dealing with, with, about what you're going through. Amen. That touches God. You say, well, why, why do I want to touch God? Ask your name and say, why do I want to touch God? You want to touch God the same reason the woman with the issue of blood wanted to touch him. Come on. Want to touch the hem of his garment. See, because transference can be made. Impartation has to be made through connection. Through a touching, amen, there is a spiritual touching that happens, amen, that you need, that the believer, amen, in these last days, that we need to make, amen. You touch God when you worship him, when you praise him, amen, with your heart, when you put your heart into it, amen. The, the, uh, the, uh, the choir was singing, uh, and uh, they, were, they were only supposed to do one song, but the Lord, the Lord spoke to me and said, have them do another song. Have them do another song. That second song was more for the choir than it was for you. Because of their heart. Come on. Because, because God wants to elevate them in their connection, their touch with him. I, I won't get into it, but, but, but it's about... What they're putting out, touch it. Now, we out here, you out here receiving, amen, you need to touch God too on the receiving. But when you give with your heart and you receive with your heart, with your emotions, amen, there's a connection there. You're starting to connect 
to God with more of your being. God created your intellect. God created your emotions. God created your will. Are y'all with me? Amen. So involve all of you Amen. in what God said to do. Are y'all with me? The, the theme and the thought today, and it's not real deep, is that, that God, God wants us to be thankful. These are all steps, amen, part of a process, uh, a procedure in which we need to be following in order to be thankful unto God, which is his ultimate will for us. We spend so much of our time uh, trying to understand and figure out how to receive from God, how to get something from God. Come on, amen. But how much do we really know about thanking God for what he has already done. Wow. It, see, it seems to me as a parent. Anybody parents out here? As a parent. As a parent. Amen. You are more apt. More likely. Uh, more willing. More wanting. Amen. To do something for your child. Amen. When they appreciate and acknowledge what you have already done. If you keep doing for them and doing for them. Look at somebody say, and do it for them? And they act like there's nothing? Come on. And, and, and all you see is another hand coming in? You, 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 get, you get tired of that? That gets old real fast. Am I by myself? Am I by myself? It's like, wait, they don't get it. <laughs> amen. But when you have a child, amen, that's always thankful, that's always showing gratitude. We, you know we're God's children, don't you? God wants us to be thankful. Look, 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 look at this. He says, uh, the, the 20th verse, he says, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's give thanks for God, give thanks to God for all things. All the time. Always is all the time. That's the key right there. Being thankful to God always. No matter what you're dealing with. No matter what you're going through. God can handle it. I said God can handle it. The question is, will you thank him while you're in it? No, no, that's the question. Can you thank him? Will you thank him? You can, but will you thank him while you're in it? Because that shows God something about you. You're not just a fair weather saint. You only believe in God when things are going good. You're only grateful, for God, grateful to God when he's doing everything you want. Come on. Your attitude is the atmosphere that you live in. Last week we talked about work where you are planted. Anybody remember that? Work where you work the ground where God has planted you. And so, and, and we talked about just for a minute, just to, we talked about how people are always trying to move to another garden. They think the problem is they're in the wrong garden. When the problem is you haven't learned how to tend and till the soil of the garden you're in. Are, are y'all with me? And so, and, and so it's not about, it's not about uh, uh, getting to another place, but it's about changing the atmosphere, amen, that you, of the place you're in. Your attitude, amen. Your attitude does a whole lot to determine how you see things. Amen. If you have an attitude of faith or an attitude of failure. Come on. Attitude of faith uh, lets you, you believe that if you have faith in God, I had to qualify that, that God can take care of it. Not only that he can, that he will. Amen. And so that's going to empower you. That atmosphere is going to empower you to, uh, can I connect them right now, to till the ground of the garden you're in. You're going to feel empowered. Amen. To 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 uh, tend to that garden. Amen. But it, but if you don't have faith in the power of God, you you you're thinking you got to move. 
Because God ain't strong enough to help you right there. Look at your name and say thankfulness. thankfulness. What did you thank God for today? No, ask him. Say, what did you, this is an interactive church right now. What did, what did you thank God today for? Did you thank God today for your husband? God bless, God bless the marriage seminar people. Amen. Did you thank God today for your husband? Yeah. Did you thank God today for your wife? Praise the Lord. My wife, my, she over there, did you? She over there, did you? She came up here. We go, we go do the uh, new memory. She came up here. She got her sweater all. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay. Don't pull me into that right now. All right, okay. Is she working it. Look at somebody says she working it. First lady working it today. Amen. Okay. All right, so how y'all doing, mothers? <laughs> Forgot y'all was over there. Hallelujah. What am I preaching about today? <laughs> uh, <laughs> being thankful. You think God, we need, with all of the problems and issues that we're going through, and, and God knows you're going, with some, you're going through some stuff, but, the, but what God wants us is to thank him even in the midst of it while we're going through it, show appreciation, amen, and recognition for what he has already done and your faith in that he's able to take care of it right now, what you need him to do. Amen. Thankfulness for what he has done is recognition that he has done it. Thankfulness for what he is doing is appreciation and recognition of your faith that he is doing it. Thankfulness for what he shall do is faith and belief that he's going to move on your behalf. <sighs> Are y'all with me? Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. Praise the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's go to Psalms real quick. Psalms, uh, 34th number of Psalms, the first verse. Amen. And uh, we, could, we could sing all those, all those songs today because I knew I wasn't going to be long. Amen. There's no sense in us teaching this and talking about it if we're not going to change our attitude and our, uh, our attitude and our behavior. Amen. In accordance with the word. Amen. The word comes to renew our minds. All right, Psalms 34 and 1 says, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. When you praise God and you are thankful to God, you are blessing him. Come on. You are giving him credit. Are y'all with me? I mean, when you, when you praise him and when you bless him, amen, from, with sincerity. I mean, I really am thankful to you, God, for who you are, for what you have done, and for what you are doing, and for what I know you're going to do for me. David said, I will do this at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. How? His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Wow. His praises shall continually be. Be in my mouth. This is the will of the Lord concerning you. That you give thanks. Always. Always. Amen. No matter how, how bad it looks. No matter what you're going through. Amen. It could always be worse. I just thought I'd drop that in there right there. It could always be worse. But. Always praise God. Always praise God. Amen. For as good as it is. And for as good as it's going to be. Yeah. Are y'all with me? Yeah. No, this is a commitment you have to make. Yeah. See, because right now, you may not feel like making the commitment. Right now, intellectually, you may say, oh, yeah, that sounds right, preacher. That's okay. That's right, pastor. Yeah, I'm going to do that. But at, your mo at the moment of your testing, Amen. you have to wake up. You got to redeem the time. Yeah. Come on. You got to think about what's going on around you. Walk circumspectly. You got to be wise enough to thank God. 
Look at your name and say, wise enough to thank God. Wise enough to thank God. Amen. All right. He says, in the, in the second verse, he says, thir, uh, Psalms 34 and 2, My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. You know what I'm going to brag about? What I'm going to be proud of? How my soul is going to grow? In thanking God. And as a result, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. It's good news. Amen. This process that we're just sharing to you right now should be good news. The humble. The humble. Look at somebody say the humble. The humble. See, humble people are going to hear this and say, man, I am glad you told me that. I'm so glad that you told me that one of the missing keys was I wasn't thanking God. I was so focused at what I was going through and what I'm dealing with and what I don't have and how to, how to figure out how to get some more from God. I forgot to thank him for what he'd already done. Wow, where is my thanks been? Where's my praise been? Where's my blessing of the Lord been? Amen? Hallelujah. The fourth verse. He says, oh, third verse. He says, David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Amen. And you know, I like to work that verse because uh, David says, look, let's magnify the Lord. Magnify the Lord with me. Now, we know again, and I'm going to keep drilling on it. You know, again, you can't make God any bigger than he is because God is already everywhere. Come on. He made everything. Come on. And so you can't. You can't literally make God bigger than he is. But David says, we can magnify him. But in order for us to magnify him, we have to do it together. And we do it together uh, by, by exalting his name together. So when we do it, it's one thing for you to magnify God all by yourself. But if you can get a group of people together, if you can get a church assembly together, amen, if you can get some praisers and some blessers and some worshipers together, you can magnify the Lord. And he inhabits the praises of his people. Now look at this though. But see, what, what, what's being magnified here? Is not God, but what's being magnified is our connection to him. Yeah. Our interaction with him. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. You're creating an atmosphere of amplification. Yeah. You are amplifying where one can chase a thousand in the negative sense, and two can put ten thousand to flight. Amen. Now when we're all magnifying God together, God wants us all to be thankful together. Push your name and say, will you let yourself be thankful? Now I said, will you allow yourselves to be thankful? See, you got to shift your attitude. You have to shift your, 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 your focus. Come on. On to God. You can't thank God like you need to thank him thinking about your problems. I said like you need to thank him. Thinking about your problems. And so that's the shift right there. Is to get your mind off of your problems and get your mind on God. You ever talk to people? I, I am going to move on. But you ever talk to people and you can't get them unstuck? They just keep talking about the same thing over and over again. It's like you try to, you try to break the cycle. He said, well, let's talk about fishing. They go right back to Lizzie. No, you know what Lizzie did last night. And she called me, she called me so much problems. And Lizzie won all my money. Come on. It's like, man, let's praise God. Is God going to do anything about Lizzie? <laughs> you know, hey, man, get off of that. Let's praise God. Disconnect. See, I find out to have real faith. You, you got to be able to connect to God and disconnect from your circumstances. Hmm. Amen. All right. Okay. Look at, look, look, look at this. Amen. He says, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. And, and now, in the fourth verse, 34 and 4, he says, I sought the Lord. And he heard me. Now, he's talking about himself in all of this. He gives you a procedure of how to magnify God. And then he tells you, what I am doing is seeking God. 
He says, I sought, I sought the Lord and he heard me. When we decide to magnify the Lord, you're seeking God and God's going to hear you when you follow this procedure. Are y'all with me? I, it's, it's not two different things. He says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So as we're thanking God and praising him and blessing his name, we're redeeming the time. We're also, uh, also God's going to hear us because we're seeking him the right way, entering to his gates with what? Thanksgiving. Come on. Into his courts with praise. Come on. We're going deeper and deeper, amen, into the, into the courts, into the inner courts of God. Into the presence of God. And he, we, eventually we get to the point where he's going to hear us. He's going to hear you. Amen? Amen. And we know that, that, that uh, John said that uh, here's the confidence that we have. If we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if he hears us, we have what we ask for. We have the petition. Amen. So, you, so God wants to move us today into a position of thanking him, but not only just thanking him, that's a position of being able to be heard by him. Amen. How y'all doing? Y'all right? Can I, can I take five, ten more minutes? Amen. All right. He says, they, then in the fifth verse, they looked unto him, the people now that are magnifying the Lord together, that are seeking the Lord, they looked unto him and were lightened. They're loathed. Come on. They were enlightened and the burdens that they were carrying were lifted. And their faces were not disappointed, were not ashamed. God will not disappoint you, amen, if you will humble yourselves, amen, and become thankful to him enough to bless his name, amen, to praise him. And let me tell you something, we can't leave this out. And if you will do it all the time. All the time. Now, you don't have to verbally be doing it all the time, but you can be doing it in your heart while, while somebody's fussing at you. You're there, you standing there with your mouth closed. Say, Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Instead of focusing on what they're saying. Come on. You got your mind. Come on. Come on. You got your mind on Jesus. In perfect peace. Come on. Will he keep those, right? 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 Whose minds are stayed on him. Come on. Yeah. Amen. This is what you have to be able to do. Amen. Why? To maintain that right atmosphere and attitude. Yeah. Look at somebody say maintain it. Yeah. Maintain it. Amen. Yeah. All right. All right. He says, uh, he says, uh, uh, this poor man, uh, six verse, this poor man cried and the Lord heard him. Same person, same situation, and saved him out of all his troubles. Again, he's reaffirming this process works. Have you ever been a poor man? Amen. Have you ever been, I, I'm a poor man. I, I need some things. Say, that's a wrong confession, huh? No, I, I, I'm lacking some things, amen. So what am I going to do? I'm going to cry unto the Lord. I'm going to bless his name. I'm going to praise him. Because I recognize, see, if you think you don't need nothing, then that, maybe that's why you ain't been praising God. Maybe that's why you've not been thankful to God. Because you think, man, I wish I had an anointing to go all the way to the back of the church. Something happened about four or five rows down. But I'm praying for a grace that go all the way. Amen. We ain't in two different buildings. Are y'all with me? Amen. Look at your name and say, you got to get involved. You got to get involved. You got to receive this with your heart. Amen. With your attitude. <laughs> you know, when, when I got saved, I, I, I know I only got about five minutes left. <laughs> when, I got, I, when I got saved, before I got saved, I was pretty cool. <laughs> I was pretty cool. Yeah, I thought so anyway. I just, just finished uh, uh, City College uh, playing football for two years. I thought, you know, I thought I was a jock and everything. Pastor Nelson was like, what is he talking about? <laughs> jock? Okay. <laughs> From Chile. Yeah, they explained it to him. Okay. And so, and so 
Uh, and so I had this thing. That's one, that's one reason why I didn't accept the Lord for a while, uh, because, you know, I'd been hearing about these Christians and everything, but I couldn't see myself walking around with a Bible and all that and, and talking. And so <laughs> when I did it, let me just uh, fast forward a little bit. After I did, when I decided to do it, I, I just cut the dog's tail off in one whack. You know, I'm not going to come to church now and try to live for God and be worried about what, you th what people think. Of me. I can't live for God thinking about what you think. It's enough for me to be concerned about what he thinks. Now, I can't be thinking about what he thinks and what you think. So I think, I think that if I get it right with what he thinks, then everything else will be all right. So why am I bringing this in? Because you got to get engaged, brother, sister, church. Amen. Well, you know, you got you to let your hair down. You got to say, I don't care what's going on around me. I'm seeking the Lord. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him. He heard the poor man, the one that recognized he was in lack. But he got his prayer answered. Are y'all with me? Oh, okay, I only got like uh, four minutes left. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Somebody will teach me how to tell time or <laughs> count or something, huh? All right, look, look, look. Uh, almost done, really. Seventh verse. The angel of the Lord encamped around about them. Those that have been following this process that he's laid out here in Psalms 34. The angels of the Lord are, are encamped around them. Not everybody. Not everybody. But those. Amen. Them. Amen. And, and then he says, that fear, the, that fear him and deliver it, and they deliver them. Amen. Those that fear God are the same ones. Uh, they're the same ones that are willing, willing to bless his name. Now, I love you. I love you. And I am only human. So sometimes as a human being, I make wrong assessments and judgments and all that. Mistakes. Look at your name and say, just like you do. But I kind of, I'm a little reluctant to believe that when you come to church, if you won't praise God, that you will praise him when you're not at church. I mean, you're around friendly folk here. You're around people that will praise God with you. And so if you're unwilling to do it now, I'm like, when will you do it? <laughs> I remember, I, remember I, was, uh, I was in the reading room years ago uh, uh, it, it, when I worked at the hospital in the reading room, a bunch of doctors and, and things, and we're looking at a scan. All of a sudden, I, 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 well, not all of a sudden, I was, for some reason, I started thinking about Jesus. And I did one of my old Holy Ghost quakes. <laughs> Y'all don't believe in the quake? <laughs> it's, it's real, brother. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and they said, they looked and said, Les, what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, you got to be willing to give God what he wants. Amen. What he needs all the time. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, okay, okay. I got three minutes left. All right, okay. And the Lord, oh, okay, we did that. Uh, the eighth verse. Oh, taste and see. Tasting and seeing are two different things. So now he's inviting you to participate in the procedure he just laid out. He says, if you will taste, if you will participate, then you will see. The problem is a lot of people are not thankful to God until they see it first. But he said, you ain't going to see it until you start being faithful. Are y'all with me? Amen. He said, oh, taste and see what? That the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. See, when we're thankful to God, that's because we trusted in him. When we're thankful uh, to God for what he has not, what we have not seen him do yet. I am, what, why are you thankful in advance? Because I trust him. I trust that he's going to do it. I trust that he is doing it. And I thank him for what is already done. Amen. 
Thank you, Jesus. You know, you could feel like it's already done right now. All you got to do is believe that it's done. If you just really start believing that it's done, the emotional part of your soul will start allowing you to feel like it is done. And because you feel like it is done, then your will, you'll start acting like it's done. And when you're acting like it's done, you start thanking God. And, and, and when you start thanking God, guess what? He does it. <laughs> he manifests it. Taste and see. Put your name and say, you got to get this. Thank you. Thank you, brother, with the music. Come on, help me. You got to get this right now. You got to get this. No, no, we got to shake you out of that, out of that stoic mode. We got to shake you out of that non-participation mode. Amen. It's not time to be a spectator anymore. Amen. You got to be a participant. Amen. A participant becomes a partaker. Come on. Becomes a part of. You are connected to. Amen. Amen. A, a, a spectator just judges. Hallelujah. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. Amen. And so he says, he said, be reverent of the Lord. Be grateful. Be thankful. Bless his name. Come on. Why? Because there's no lack to those that do these things, that fear him. He just showed us, amen, how to fear God through thankfulness and through praising God. That shows God you are reverencing him. Are y'all with me? When you praise God, when you bless God, when you are thankful to God, when you magnify his name, you are reverencing him. You are acknowledging him. You are extolling him that he is awesome. He is wonderful. He is good. And God says, I reward them, amen, by taking care of their needs, by delivering them from all of their troubles. We've been walking around here talking about, God, don't you see my troubles? He said, yeah, I see your trouble, but when are you going to thank me? When are you going to praise me? I don't respond to trouble. <laughs> if, I only if God said, if he only responded to trouble, he'd be out of business. Everybody's got some trouble. He responds to those that will bless him, that will have faith in him, that trust him. Amen? Ask your neighbor, say, are you getting this? Because he only got two minutes left. Psalms 34. Psalms 34 and 10. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Now why he bring that in there? Why are you going to start talking about some lions? He's talking about you. Young lions, young people that are immature, that are adolescent, that don't know any better. They're walking around with lack because they don't understand the lesson he just got through teaching. Huh? Huh? We don't want to be young lions. We want to get this now. Amen. 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 He said, the young lions do lack and suffer hunger. So they're always in need because they're young. But they that seek the Lord, see, it's maturity. It's understanding. It's growth when we will seek the Lord. And you're not seeking God if you won't Bless his name if you won't be thankful. You can't seek God without being thankful. I'm going to go on a fast. Are you going to thank God doing it? I'm going to read 99 books of the Bible. Good luck with that. You're going to add some. I'm going to do all these things and fail to be thankful. To bless his name. And see, so you can't just do it right now just because I'm talking about it. I mean, you can do it now. You should do it. But don't wait till we meet again. And then I got to pump you back up to the same spot. You know, 
Pastor had me all on the edge last time. I almost said, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and then you miss Wednesday night. You miss next Sunday. You come back. And now I'm about a mile away from that edge now where I was. He got to start all over. The devil is alive. You in too much lack for that. And lack is not just natural things. We need to be able to withstand in the evil day. Amen. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Are y'all with me? This is part of what we need to do to be able to stand. <laughs> Amen. All right. Okay. 11th verse. Come ye children. See, he brings it out now, you young lions. Hearken unto me. Listen to this word that's being taught. I will teach you. Oh, I'm offended already. Nobody can teach me anything. You better learn. <laughs> I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I'll teach you the benefit in reverencing God and blessing his name. What man is he that desireth life? If anybody out here desires life, the real, the Zoe kind of life that God wants you to live. And loveth many days, you want to live a long, prosperous, blessed life. Then you need to receive this word today. You need to become a person that blesses the Lord at all times, that is thankful at all times. Amen. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that he may see good? If you're out here today, amen, this is you, you need to receive that word, this word today. Start blessing God. Start thanking God. Whatever your circumstance is right now, whatever your lack is, yeah, yeah, you have, you have some lack because none of us have everything that we need. If you're out there today and you, you believe you have everything in, in you, in, that you need, then ask, ask, ask God to help you help me with my need. Because you got everything. Ask God to move you into the level of abundance. God wants his people to have abundance so that they can take care of their needs and help with somebody else's. Are y'all with me? Every good work. Praise God. You receive this word today? Come on, give God a hand clap. God bless you.